So good afternoon, everybody. I hope everybody can hear me and uh, see my screen right now. First of all, uh, welcome to all of you to the first meeting of the Peer Learning Club number four, the one about uh, Train the Trainers. Uh, my name is uh, Valentina De Vico. I am the communication manager of the Skillman team. And I've been in touch with all of you for all the communication activities, including the invitation to today's webinar. Uh, I'm very glad to see all of you today. <clears throat> today I'll be your host for this uh, webinar, uh, together with my colleagues, uh, Mr. Giovanni Crisona, the founder of the Schema Network, and uh, Elena Romanini. <clears throat> they will be interacting with you later on this webinar today to get more uh, in detail about the expectations that we have out of these uh, peer learning club activities and the kind of work that we have planned to do with uh, all of you. And also, as it was already mentioned in the invitation, uh, we have planned uh, to organize uh, some interactive activities during this session in order to have your first contributions and uh, insights in a very simple but also, let's hope, organized way. <clears throat> so before giving the floor to, to them, I will just give uh, a quick uh, introduction on the, um, on the Skillman team, on the Skillman network, and also to the main features and characteristics of these uh, peer learning clubs. So starting from uh, the Skillman network, uh, I know that uh, many of you already know uh, this network uh, and are members of uh, the Skillman network um, already. So maybe familiar with uh, the activities that we have already started and that we will plan in the next uh, months. But for the others who don't know or don't have uh, clear ideas yet, I will just give a short overview right now. So what is the Skillman? The Skillman network is basically uh, an international network, and it includes uh, many different stakeholders. It includes uh, Tibet providers, universities, research centers, individuals, policymakers, and industries. And the network focuses on uh, skills research and training in the advanced manufacturing sector. Uh, the network aims at uh, exchanging, well, introducing and exchanging the skills it provides innovative curricula for the advanced manufacturing sector, and it also coordinates the activities of our international members. Um, we have created the uh, Skillman Network in uh, 2014, so many years ago. Uh, but since then, we have seen it growing very much. Uh, nowadays, we actually have more than 500 members. Uh, around 560 active members from uh, 84 countries. They come from all over the world, actually, from uh, also from um, outside of Europe. Um, so the Skillman Network uh, cooperates uh, with uh, many organizations. Uh, so we jointly work on the management of these activities and also on other events. As you see from the screen, uh, one, of the, one of the partners that we have uh, for, uh, with the Skillman Network is the Assembly of the European Regions, uh, AER, uh, then IVETA, the International Education and Training Association, uh, Cumulus also, uh, an international association of universities and colleges of arts, design and media, and EAPRIL the European Association for Practitioner Research on Improving Learning. Uh, the coordination and management of these uh, Skillman activities, including the one that we're having today, this webinar on the peer learning clubs, are facilitated by all these members and uh, are done in partnership with uh, ETF, the European Training Foundation, <clears throat> that we are very proud to collaborate with. Now, moving on to the nature of these peer learning clubs and to explain you what are the expectations and what are the characteristics of these clubs, um, I'm here to explain a little bit more uh, these aspects. So what are the peer learning clubs? The peer learning clubs are four permanent focus groups of international experts, uh, and uh, includes including you, of course, 
that we have uh, put together with the aim of facilitating the discussion of specific topics uh, and to jointly work on, the, on some activities related to these topics. As you see from the screen now, there are four peer learning clubs. The first one is about the advanced manufacturing sector. The second one is about advocacy and policy influencing. The third one is about uh, work-based learning and standards. And uh, this one, uh, the number four, is uh, called Train the Trainers and uh, covers uh, more the operational dimension. Uh, today, we have actually started this morning uh, with uh, the other webinars. So each uh, meeting was uh, uh, devoted, dedicated uh, to a different group. We have already done three of the webinars. This will be the, the, the last for the day. And they were all very successful um, in terms of participation and in terms of um, um, like um, inclusion. So these pre-learning clubs in our idea after this introductory meeting today will have to meet regularly over the months uh, to work together on uh, some activities. So each group at the end of this process uh, will create and publish a policy paper. So in the end we will have four policy papers, each of them will be uh, created by uh, each of these uh, peer learning clubs. Uh, so, um, yesterday in the invitation email to this webinar today, we have already uh, invited you to make a reflection, to brainstorm on what are the key concepts that you think in your, uh, in your perspective are the most important and relevant on the Skillman Peer Learning Clubs. So I'll be very glad now to share the results of this poll uh, with all of you to see together what are the key concepts that all of you with your contributions have already uh, described and uh, uh, shared with us. Uh, as you see from the screen, uh, collaboration is the first uh, key concept that you see with big letters. Um, the fact that it's bigger than the rest means that uh, many experts, many um, participants uh, suggested this word as the main concept of the Skillman Peer Learning Club. So, of course, there is this concept of uh, collaborating together and working on, uh, on um, knowledge sharing. Uh, participation is also one of the words that stand out, and that is also because Participation is one of the key concepts of these groups, so we hope, we wish that all these, uh, that all the participants will be able to uh, contribute um, to, these, uh, uh, to these groups. Then, as you see, we have mutual learning, sharing, um, learning, again, and knowledge. So these, let's say, are the main aspects of uh, what we are trying to achieve here. Also, innovation, I see inno innovate and reinvent are some of the words that many of you suggested. Then I see policy making, increase, exchange. This is also an exchanging platforms, of course. Networking, because this is a valuable opportunity for all of you. Um, to broaden your network and to meet um, experts from all over the world. I remind to all of you that the participants to this um, peer learning group come from different backgrounds, so it will be a very good opportunity for all of us to ex uh, share information and exchange knowledge. Um, interactive participation is one of the words um, that I see here on the screen, and uh, I, text I agree with uh, this concept because uh, we really look forward to have your contribution and participation to the groups, expertise, grouping, interaction, peer, build, participative approach. Again, the participation is one of the main aspects that we are looking in in the in the in the attendees. Skills, pooling, and common baseline. So this was the first. Um, the first contribution that we got from you, and thank you very much for 
uh, participate into this poll. Uh, so this is already a very good result that, that we are getting from, uh, from all of you. So moving on, I will just uh, briefly explain the time frame of these peer learning clubs. As you see from uh, my screen, the peer learning clubs were created, were put, put together uh, in November 2019. So that was officially the starting point from, for the peer learning clubs. They will work together in different cycles until uh, October of 2021. Um, so as we mentioned today already, and I would, I would like to repeat this, uh, Skillman organizes uh, an international forum every year for its participants uh, coming from all over the world. Uh, this uh, forum is called C uh, SIF. SIF. Uh, Skillman International Forum, and this year, unfortunately, it was postponed uh, some months later because it usually uh, happens during September and October. This year is going to be in uh, December. So this is an important information for us because in our idea, we would like to work together and uh, finally uh, produce, create this policy paper by the international forum of this year. So by December 2020, we would like to have our policy paper of the peer learning club number four, this one, by uh, this date. Mm -hmm. So um, now I'm going to give the word and the floor to Mr. Giovanni Fisona, uh, the president of the Skillman Network, who will give you more uh, an understanding on the fundamentals uh, of the peer learning clubs and the vision of these groups. <clears throat> uh, Giovanni, if you're connected, you can uh, speak now. Uh, I cannot hear you, Giovanni. I still cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. Yes, uh, just a moment. Technicians uh, are sharing my screen. Okay, Giovanni, now it's okay, fine. Okay, Giovanni, now it's fine. Okay. Probably you, I don't see the the slides that do you see the screen the slide uh, right now it's blank right now it's blank but if you want i can share the yes thank you okay okay just hold on a second. Just hold on a second. Okay, can you see them now? Can you see them now? Yes, thank you very much, Valentina outstanding presentation and organization. I'm very glad to be part of this great team with you and the other colleagues and Elena, Fabio, uh, many others. And I see that uh, we improve a lot. Uh, we have uh, nice uh, feedbacks from uh, uh, the colleagues from whom. <coughs> and uh, I I have the duty to introduce uh, the participants to the reasons and the vision that we have uh, uh, and that um, fund the actions that we implement uh, with the peer learning clips. And I think that um, it's also a good occasion to resume even for myself uh, the things that we have uh, presented today it's a long journey with uh, four peer learning clubs meetings. Um, 
Uh, we are going to, to the end with the fourth one. Until now, I think uh, it was a very successful experience, and uh, I learned a lot of things from, from your presentations, from Elena, from you, and from the remarks from the other colleagues, from Julian and the other participants, even if, uh, of course, the participation is not uh, possible to be so um, open in terms for microphone uh, to everybody because there are too many participants to do it, but uh, uh, we knew uh, this and, and we reserve this possibility for the um, activity in the individual groups uh, of the four peer learning clubs. So, um, coming back to the uh, topic that is in charge of me. I, I have uh, this um, uh, uh, these suit uh, that uh, is uh, from uh, our advisor, Professor Rupert McLean, that uh, uh, left us in the last uh, Schemann International Forum with uh, all the ingredients uh, to make uh, together with him, of course, because he's the, the writer uh, with us, um, the, I mean, the Schilman uh, Declaration, uh, uh, Schilman Florence Declaration. And um, I go back to what was the takeaway message uh, from uh, Professor McLean uh, from the Schilman Forum uh, 19. Uh, where we discussed the effect of the mega trends that are affecting global, national, and regional economies and societies and that have implications for the world of work and for Tibet in our regard. Uh, Professor McLean uh, left uh, this uh, takeaway message, uh, uh, meaning that uh, the economic uh, and the uh, workplace uh, changes, and we see how it is true now with with the pandemic uh, effect, the effect of pandemic uh, in our life. Uh, these uh, changes have uh, an impact uh, and uh, make uh, the human capital increasingly important. It was important even before, but uh, we see now how it is, it become evident that it is fundamental, the, the value of the human capital. And so these uh, uh, move to the reflection that the, as the skills are the foundation of the human capital, we need to talk about which are the skills that we uh, we need and we can uh, develop. So, in particular, of course, being oriented to the uh, sustainable uh, development goals, uh, we look to all these skills that promote the sustainable goals, but in particular, we discussed in Florence the green skills, the transferable skills, uh, and so on. And uh, in this um, in this uh, regard, um, the, the skills that uh, we discussed are the foundation for Industry 4.0 and for the 21st century. And uh, with this meaning that these are the foundation, these are the skills that we discussed about, we identified a need to re-engineer the Tibet for change, including in this uh, uh, reflection the need to have uh, an holistic approach. So you can go to the next slide that, uh, not that one, yes, the next slide that represent, represents this idea to have an holistic approach, so to involve all the components of the, of the society and the business and vet providers, the individuals, the policy makers and so on, with the need uh, to re-engineering the Tibet for a big change 
rethinking with the bottom-up process what is required for the TVET to meet both the workforce and the wider societal concerns. So we have in front uh, uh, a big challenge and we are going to face this challenge uh, putting on the table all the components that can interact and contribute to this. With the need to uh, also re-engineering the TVET for society and not only for labor market. Uh, so adopting this uh, holistic approach of TVET which also includes uh, an ethical dimension, an ethical approach to the formation of the skills. So what are the challenges that we have uh, in front, uh, putting together these components that we have in this slide? Uh, the impact and the characteristics of the curricula in the society of tomorrow is the challenge we have. What kind of curricula we, we need? and how our TVET organizations can, and our companies, can uh, help in this regard to build the new competencies, new skills, and so on. The consequences that we could have with a TVET system that could be limited to just respond to one part, to the productivity demands, and not con considering, for example, the equitable, the peaceful, and the green society. So what could be the consequence and what could be the cost for such a society uh, not considering uh, all the parts? And what could be the ultimate consequence for the planet? Because we understand now how we are all interconnected in a, in a real uh, in real time, something happening in one part of the planet arrives at our homes, our own homes, and we, we, we didn't expect uh, this, but now we see how it is uh, true. I'm, I'm referring to the COVID. And who could pay the price if we are not able to succeed in this, uh, uh, in this drive? facing this kind of challenges. So we can go to the next slide and we can reflect on how to act in practice against these challenges. What we could do if not uh, uh, embedding with a solid and consistent arrangement with ethical skills embedded in the skill sets to provide the citizens with their own uh, necessary um, protections in terms of future actions. You will do what you are able and what you will be able to do. And, and also not leaving one behind, providing we talk about the advanced manufacturing skills, not leaving one behind in the access to the advanced manufacturing skills. I refer in particular to last underdeveloped economies, for example, because otherwise we risk to increase the gap. So uh, in this regard, uh, we need uh, to have uh, a very big uh, impact that is an ethical impact in what we do. So we can change the slide, uh, Valentina, thank you. The, the Skillman network wish to give a sense to learning. And we need to rethink how to do our work. Because uh, the role of TVET uh, in forming uh, the consciences of those who learn is changing. There is a swift from the role of the general education and also the religions to Tibet direction. Because Tibet is more and more responsible to help people to stay in harmony and to survive and to have rights in the world. So Tibet role is changing. And there is a shift also from the uh, theory of the human capital and the human capabilities. So 
the skills are in the centers. And the qualification that we provide with uh, our activities as PIVET uh, providers, for example, the qualification have a role in the educational sector, of course, but not only. There are at least three sectors where these qualifications uh, can change the world because they have relevance in education, but also in the labor market and also in general in the society. This is the change that I was meaning uh, just now, uh, just right now about the role of Tibet uh, in regard uh, of the uh, consciences of the people regarding uh, all the seven the, the um, development goals. So how we can make uh, to coexist uh, these uh, roles with the high speed changes and the commitment to innovation that the industry uh, presents to us. First, uh, we concluded, and this is uh, also in the um, Florence Declaration, that the understanding of the future skill needs is the key, and we need uh, to source consensus from all the level, territorial level, regional level, international level, adopting a bottom-up approach. This is the reason of these uh, uh, peer learning clubs why we organize this, because uh, we believe that the, the participation is necessary to understand and to identify the skills for the future. So uh, value for the future of the society and not only for the future of the business. So we call to act all the players and not only the Tibet side or not only the company side, the business side. So we need to create the necessary social conditions to implement uh, an equitable technology foresight exercise. In, in other words, we need to build skill foresight exercise as a continuous uh, skills anticipation way, like a, a wheel that uh, continuously turns. So you have this uh, representation in the next slide where we have uh, tried to map uh, uh, the, the logic uh, happening of uh, the skills for sight exercise that we promote, uh, provoking large interest and debate, uh, getting the feedbacks, uh, collecting, grabbing information, and making these exercises possible, putting all the players uh, together. This is not just a business process and uh, can't be restricted to the sole education environment. We need to extend our board, boards, borders to, uh, to the, uh, the, mm, the business uh, uh, stakeholders and, uh, and all the, the other uh, stakeholders that we can reach, and this is uh, because this is instead a societal project, societal maybe, sorry for my pronunciation of my bad English, uh, that needs a, a large consensus. So we have to involve all the society members uh, with a large uh, consensus, a wide approach, and uh, an interaction at uh, all uh, levels. Um, the next uh, slide is about uh, the uh, international for our annual international forum that is not an end is a milestone on this uh, continuous renewing of uh, ideas and uh, uh, information that we need to collect to understand the needs of skills for the future the, the future skills and uh, so we need to decide to 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 design the uh, the society of tomorrow, being aware that uh, the curriculum of today is the society of tomorrow. So what we design today in terms of curriculum, because we work in education, we work in designing curricula, is what will change the society of tomorrow. And it's important that we are uh, conscious about our big uh, uh, responsibility in this uh, sense. So we need to design the society of tomorrow, making the learners uh, 
uh, the part more conscious and responsible in this regard for the uh, for the future because the the curricula that uh, they will have now will afflict their life tomorrow so this is for the future and not just uh, for today and the annual uh, recall that we have with the Skillman International Forum is the occasion to close one turn of the well to well exchange uh, the will to well exchange the um, uh, the experiences that we have done and the components of the, the, the components of the knowledge that we uh, we collect and then uh, with this material to pro the occasion to produce with all this material uh, finalized the our policy uh, papers and our capacity to implement uh, a real impact uh, on the policy making uh, um, environment so you can go to the next slide because uh, this is just uh, a, a short uh, or a small uh, uh, part of uh, our counterparts that we uh, address with our policy uh, papers and uh, our reviews not only the European Parliament for example European Commission or all supranational bodies that can change the rules but also the national ministries the national parliaments the regional authorities the regional governments and so on all these actors must be addressed with uh, our ideas our ideas comes from a bottom-up process include uh, all of the participants to the uh, to the peer learning clubs take the best from them allow the self uh, um, collaboration the the, um, uh, um, the support among uh, organizations allow the uh, possibility to get uh, uh, new knowledge and new competencies collaborating with the colleagues provoke uh, this uh, peer learning effect and then finally produce new ideas, new uh, report on best practices, on experiences, proposals, uh, and uh, also wishes. And with this, we go to them and we say, this is our idea, we won't have an impact because we believe that this is the direction that the education in general, and Tibet in particular, in refer to advanced manufacturing, has to take to give us uh, this uh, future society that respond to our uh, vision. So this I think uh, is what is behind uh, the constitution of the peer learning clubs. I try to understand the meaning of the document that we have produced uh, uh, in the last stage of the last uh, Skillman International Forum and uh, I um, I hope that uh, at least part of these uh, principles and uh, views uh, will be shared or at least will be discussed by the participants uh, of the field learning clubs uh, to have uh, a great uh, strong collaboration and if it will be like uh, your work uh, Valentina and your colleagues uh, in organizing all these uh, uh, occasions I think it will be a very important relevant and uh, very nice occasion to meet uh, colleagues uh, to discuss uh, and to learn each other. Thank you very much for the attention. I remain connected, so in case we uh, need to interact more, I will be here. Just switch on the microphone, and I will uh, I will get to the floor. Okay. Thank you very much, Giovanni, for your insights. As usual, they're very inspiring. They're very inspiring. For your for our next. Uh, I would kindly ask you to move to yourself because I can hear the echo on my voice. Okay. Then again, thank you very much, Giovanni, for your contribution to this uh, webinar today. Now it's
the time to give the floor to Elena Romanini, who will get more into in in deep details on uh, the actual practical work that the Peer Learning Club is going to do from now on in the next months. Thank you very much, uh, Elena. Are you connected? Can you hear us? Yes, yes, I can hear perfectly. Uh, thank you, Valentina, for this space, and thank you to all the participants for joining the uh, first meeting of this fourth peer learning club. Uh, as uh, my colleague Valentina said during his uh, introduction, uh, her introduction, we have some interaction during during this meeting, so it's a time for the first step of this interaction. And uh, uh, remembering the inspirations coming from the intervention. Uh, by Giovanni Criso now, we can start with uh, the first uh, game. So, next slide, please. This is the environment we have chosen to um, share these uh, inputs and uh, these uh, common votations, we can say. You can access uh, to this space through the browser, so through uh, your PC or your smartphone. In case of uh, you prefer the smartphone, you have to select the QR code to assess. After assessing, you have to insert the uh, access code displayed in the slide, so PLCs. And uh, remember, please, that you have to stay connected from the first access to the hands of the webinar, to the hands of the interactive sessions we um, face, we, we, we share later on also, this is the first step, as I said, because otherwise you must to relog every time. Okay, so stay tuned, stay connected after the first access. So please, we can go on and try to share some main concepts related to our collaborative work that will be the base of uh, the basis of the PLC from the next meeting, so from tomorrow to December 2020. As I said, we will discuss and evaluate our final results during the uh, Skillman International Forum in December. So first concept, vision, the curriculum of today is the society of tomorrow, a sentence uh, by Giovanni Crisona that is very inspiring and very effective. So you can vote one option. I fully agree. I partially agree. I don't agree totally disagree. So we can see the results in real time. So um, the most of us is fully agree with um, this sentence. And in this, we can say that trainers, in company trainers and bad trainers or bad professionals uh, can play a crucial role in uh, innovating the curricula of tomorrow. So we can uh, pass to the second main concept that is uh, uh, related to yeah, the second question. So potentials, we can include the ethical values in the skills sets. So as a shared, our bottom-up approach to peer learning, mutual learning, and joint work within the PLC is, is a bottom-up approach. So we, are, we have the power to act, to be ambassadors of this innovation for the change of the TVET of tomorrow. So we can hold the vote and selecting one option, once again. So the majority of us is once again fully agreed with this sentence, with this statement. We can wait some seconds more for concluding the votation and then to reflect on the third main concept. Okay, so motivation. Motivation is only of course, it is uh, also strategic, inspiring cooperation and knowledge sharing processes. So we have the power to influence the Tibet policy agenda. 
do you think we can do it? We can reach this goal. This is very ambitious, but also very challenging. And this will be one of the main results of the PLC work. So I partially agree. So yeah, the 61% of us is partially agree with this statement, probably because of the ambitious goal, of course. But during the joint work, step by step, we will uh, yeah, we will uh, be more sure about these achievements. That will be a common achievement for all of us. We can proceed, of course. Yeah, please remember that you have to stay connected for the other interactive sections. And this is a slide when we can share some common approaches to the future work together, some tools, and some methodologies. So as you can see from these slides, we have um, an approach, a collaborative and participative approach to innovation. And each PLC will work through these different four phases. The first phase is very important and it will start with the next meeting we will have after today in the very close period, starting by tomorrow, yeah. Um, and this, is, uh, this phase is focused on uh, identification of priorities, main problems, uh, urgencies, and also challenges we have to set and to share related to uh, operational capacities and for changing TVET, that is the main focus of this fourth PLC. So train the trainers, how we can train the trainers which challenges we have to face, thinking also to the rapid evolution of the global context, uh, the, the uh, new needs of education, what we can uh, valorize in the co-design of the new curricula, and what kind of new role trainers at any level can play for uh, reaching this innovative goal. So second phase, plan strategies. Of course, it's a collaborative work we will have to make, make uh, together. So we have to join, to develop joint strategies for intervention. At the end of the second phase, we will have our first concrete intellectual product, that is the first draft of the publication, publication or review, uh, with related policy paper that will be the most important concrete result of each peer learning club, as we said before. Uh, after this uh, second phase, we will have the information, we will have the tools for deci deciding together how to proceed, so how to take actions and involve concretely the relevant stakeholders at local, regional, national, up to international level. Mm -hmm. This is the main focus in stakeholders' involvement, is the main focus and the main objective of the third, third phase, take action. Then, in December, of course, this is our time frame, uh, we will uh, be develop the final um, complete publication and summary policy paper and evaluate it during the annual Skillman International Forum. Uh, it will be organized, as my colleague Valentina said, in December, within December 2020. So we have this range of months for working together and uh, reaching the goals, the common goals. Uh, we can proceed. Thank you, Valentina. Yeah, just for a reminder, of course, uh, we have to cooperate. We have to be committed in reaching all the goals. Uh, and this is the, we can say, the soul of the participatory approach that uh, is the basis of our peer learning class. Regarding the common tools for working together, first of all, a common workspace 
share the workspace, that is Space Camp. You can access to it using the link uh, you can see on your screen displayed. Of course, you have to choose the link to access to the PLC number four, that is the one we are uh, realizing together. Uh, after access, take uh, yeah, you will find a very user friendly, very easy environment to in, to be interacted. And so, please, after subscription, take some exercise, some uh, access, and try to manage the different tools for. Uh, starting the collaboration. In these uh, following the following slide, we can share also the inner work environment. That is this. So you can find you will find that after subscription, um, the following rooms. The uh, first room to do is related to the task tasks we will have we will have been, we will have to uh, develop and respect for implementation of the joint work in order to reach the shared output first of all the realization of the final publication then we have the second room that is scheduled this is the calendar of the different activities we we will plan together with the support of the plc coordinator and facilitator we have another room that is the chat room for any kind of exchange with internal debates and comparison among participants and then the plc review you can see the room dedicated to the collaborative work for the production of the publication and the policy paper. So the different phases you can recognize, of course, under my previous slide, um, have also the chapters of the final publication that will be developed in two steps, as I shown before. So the first draft at the end of the second collaborative phase the final version at the end of the fourth with a joint evaluation in December during the Skillman International Forum. So the final, the last room that is a repository for exchanging of docs, files and any source or inputs we can find important for the success of our joint work. And this is more or less the structure of the workspace we will act together in the next steps. Well, a focus on the room related to the publication of the uh, realization of the publication and the policy paper we have to achieve together. This is the product of our collaborative work. You can see also the cover of one of the four publications we realize in the four PLCs, so one publication as output of each foreseen uh, peer learning clubs. In the following slide, we can have an overview of all the information we can find always updated also on the Scaleman website. You can access in every time and every moment. And the following slide uh, provide an overview of the four publications we develop at the end of the collaborative work in the different PLCs. So please, Valentina, if you can uh, display the following slides, we can see also the four different publications with the four different policy paper, the tool through which we can realize concretely the engagement of all the relevant stakeholders for the change of the TVET sector. And uh, we can recognize also specific colors and specific layout for each publication, uh, together with, of course, a, speci a specific content related to the output of the joint work and the focus of each PLC. Thank you very much. It's the time for the second interaction. So you stay connected, of course. And we can start with the uh, important questions uh, 
we have to share also as answers that could be represent inputs for the next work together. The first one is related. Yeah, probably you you are just to assess the environment for the gaming. One moment. Okay, this is the first question, please. How many phases are there in the joint work of each PLCs? Remember the slides we shared before? You have to select one of the options. So one, two, or four phases of collaborative work. Some seconds before stopping the votation. And this is the result. So, four. Yes, two related uh, thinking about the two steps. The first step, the first draft at the hand of the second phase, and the final version at the hand of the first phase. So, but at the end, we will have one publication validated and also a policy, a summary policy paper to be promoted by the stakeholders at local level. Please, we can proceed if you agree. And try to answer together to the second sentence and the second question that is also very crucial for our next step, that is, uh, what are the main objectives of the PLCs? So fundraising, self-learning, dissemination, peer learning, policy making. 10 seconds from now to conclude the votation. Of course, you can choose one option. So peer learning and policy making are the most selected topics, the most selected issues. Yeah, of course, they are co correct. And peer learning will be the cross-cutting approach to our work. And policy making is, yeah, we have to engage policy makers at any level through a bottom-up approach, as I said, by Giovanni during his intervention. Self-learning is also an outcome of our collaborative work. Dissemination is a cross-cutting activity, of course, a cross-cutting activity that, we, that will help us to reach our stakeholder. And fundraising could be another option, but most of all, the two main outputs will be peer learning and policy making, of course. Thank you, we can proceed. The third question. How many publications of the PLCs will be made in total, one, two, three, or four. We had an overview of all the publications, suspected publications that will be produced to within December 2020. You have to think about the final product, the final version. So, yes for one publication and related policy paper for, uh, for the PLCs. So one publication for each peer learning club. Thank you very much. Okay, who are the ambassadors of the four PLCs? We spoke about direct engagement and direct commitment. 
So all PLC participants, members of the EU Parliament, UNESCO members and students or trainees, so people. Select the most suitable option for you, please. Okay, correct. The 90% of us um, chosen all PLC participants, and it's very correct because according to the peer learning approach and participative approach, we are the ambassadors of our joint strategies and of the innovation in the TVET sector for tomorrow. So we have the power to change and to influence policies and also tools where the creation of new curricula. Which is the technology implemented to facilitate PLC collaboration, Google Groups, Basecamp, Microsoft Teams, and Zoom. You have to choose one option, think about the shared workspace and common tools I displayed before, I presented before. And please subscribe as soon as you can in order to enter in the workspace for the next steps, receiving the correct instructions, of course. So Basecamp, yes. Very simple, very immediate, and with all the necessary rooms for developing our uh, shared work, our collaboration. So who, who will write the four PLC official reviews or publication with policy papers? Experts from a EU Commission, ESEA, expert from ATF EU Commission, private company experts, PLC's participants. Choose one option, seven seconds from now for voting, and in order to share the own real time results of the votation. Yes, PLC participants, we will be at the ambassador of the innovation and also the authors of the publications. Of course, the partners of the Skillman platform, as my as Valentina showed us before, will contribute to the work. But first of all, we are the authors of the final policy papers. So it's time to share the winner <laughs> of the game. Congratulations to Harry Bikas. We hope it's con is connected, is still connected. And Valentina, please, if you want to say something, your stage is yours. Thank you very much. Okay, let's see first of all if Harry Bikas is connected. So maybe he wants to share a few words. Mr. Bikas, okay. Uh, Harry Bikas, your microphone is on, if you want to share some words. You're the winner of the quiz. Hello, Harry Bikas? Hello, sir? Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. we can. Congratulations, yeah, I'm really you're sorry. our winner. Thank you. Uh, apologies, my connection is really bad, so I cannot, uh, I could not uh, hear everything uh, in between. Oh yes, of course. I'm going to repeat that. Um, we have uh, about the quiz we just made. We just saw and shared the results of who is the winner. So who replied to most questions correctly and who understood the main points of what we talked today? So you happen to be the winner of today's session. So congratulations. If you have any start then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is indeed. If you have any comments or anything that you would like to share with all of us. Uh, not really other than uh, thank you all for uh, for organizing this and thanks for for this first interaction and I'm looking forward to working with you all and actually contributing um, towards the reports. Glad to be here.
Uh, do you have a, can you share a few words about what you do, your organization, and what you, what your daily job, let's say? Uh, yes, uh, I'm a mechanical engineer, so I work at, uh, at the Laboratory for Manufacturing Systems, or LMS. Uh, this is what the LS next to my name means. Um, we are part of the University of Patras, uh, so we are in the, on the higher education, but we are also uh, doing some vocational training and official vocational training uh, for companies. And uh, we are also very interested in pioneering uh, the scheme of teaching factors, so trying to, to bring together, bring closer together uh, the industry and the academia, uh, trying to shape up professionals of, uh, of the future. Um, my field is, uh, is additive manufacturing, uh, specifically, but I don't think it, uh, it matters much. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward, as I said, um, to work with you all. Okay, thank you very much, Harry. Are you from Greece? Uh, yes, yes, that's correct. Okay, okay. All right, uh, thank you very much for your contribution. Uh, we look forward to starting working with you as well, so thank you very much. Um, so now we have actually completed the interactive quizzes. So going back to the main presentation, <clears throat> uh, this is uh, actually the time for closure. So we have uh, already presented to you the peer learning clubs, the network of skill no, Valentina, maybe the word cloud, the last word cloud is missing. All right, you're right. All so, right, you're right. So, sorry. sorry to interrupt you. No, no, you did well, actually. No, no, I, I did forgot well, about actually, because I forgot about that. Yeah. I think he's already this active. One. Okay. This one. Okay. Yes. Can everybody see my screen? Can everybody see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, Elena, do you want to present uh, this Word Cloud activity? Yes, 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 I'm ready. So, <laughs> final interaction of the day, operational dimensions, what are in keywords the main challenges and opportunities to identify and overcome the key gaps and needs of teachers, trainers, and TVET staff? Your opinion, please, through keywords, this word cloud, the resulting word cloud will be the input for the next step and also through this exercise together, we'll uh, concretely enter into the first phase of the collaborative work within the PLCs that, as we shared before, the first phase is related to the definition together of the priorities, the agencies, the main challenges, and also the main opportunities for innovating together the sector thinking about the key roles of teachers and trainers and also Tibet staff in general in this innovation process. Try to think about how this role of teachers and trainers is changing very quickly because of digitalization of learning and other innovations related to pedagogical approaches, methodologies, and tools we can use together. Thanks also about the ethical approach to this innovation, as explained by Giovanni in his intervention, because teachers and trainers can play a crucial role also in co-designing new curricula, uh, taking into account these uh, social challenges, so a sort of inclusiveness of TVET systems. We have to organize our TVET organizations and systems as inclusive providers for the TVET change in the future. Thank you very much. So we have a lot of uh, 
important keywords that can represent a starting point for the future reflection during next steps. So industry and evaluation are the most selected, but also identity opportunities, clear goals, and I saw before, rebuild their competencies, opportunities, upskilling, yeah, working remote. Creation, change, and capital. We can wait some more seconds for complete the word cloud, but I think that could be a very good starting point for next joint work. work. Okay, I see that the poll is actually very dynamic. It's still moving, so I would just give a few seconds more. Okay, the last few seconds to add your words. Okay, I guess um, I guess so we can close it here. Yes. Okay, thank you, Valentina. Okay, thank you very much, Elena, for your for leading these activities. It's actually 5 p.m. here in Italy. Uh, we have had a very full day with a lot of webinars, a lot of activities, a lot of participation from everybody. From everybody, it was a hard job, but we got until here. So, Giovanni, what are your impressions? <laughs> no, I want to congratulate with you and the rest of the team. You did a really a great uh, job, uh, outstanding performance uh, to bring on uh, four meetings of uh, one and a half hour each uh, during the day, starting from today. But I know that uh, this was not uh, only the work done because in the previous days uh, I I know how you were you were busy and um, with uh, all the concerns uh, for the success. I think that at the end uh, you have succeeded fully and the uh, result, uh, of course, we will uh, have the recording, but the results will be the effect of this work in the next uh, meetings. I'm very happy that uh, even this morning we had a lot of um, partners uh, belonging to the official uh, composition uh, of the Skillman uh, environment, not only guests, but also active uh, partners that are uh, already on board from long time, uh, even partners from, even experts from the European Training Foundation, the uh, European Association of Region, uh, Julian, who has followed uh, us uh, during uh, the, all, the, all the meetings, um, for the IVETA, so I think that uh, there is a um, sort of uh, um, real interest uh, in what we are moving on. I also thank you in particular the participants that uh, had not the opportunity to, to speak. We know that in the next uh, individual meetings we will uh, set the conditions for everybody to take the microphone and to interact directly. This was not the aim of this meeting, that was more addressed to exchange information about the organization and what is behind of this uh, movement. I think, uh, Valentina, the, the work in front uh, is uh, very much important and is not easy, but uh, as you have uh, shown today, it's possible to merge the efforts of uh, our partners and to create uh, such important occasions of sharing. And I think that uh, you and the staff are all very well equipped to 
help uh, the members uh, to collaborate and to reach uh, uh, great uh, important uh, goals. Thank you very much by my side, personal side, and uh, at the name of the of all the uh, Skillman members, I would like to thank you, uh, you for this work done. Elena, thank you very much, and Luca that is also helping us behind the sheets, and uh, all the participants. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Giovanni. So from my I would kindly ask you to put uh, your microphone so I don't hear my voice in echo. Thank you, Giovanni. Thank you for uh, your words. Very much appreciated. Uh, it was a long day. It was a very productive day, very inspiring from myself. And thank you very much for all the people who have participated to this uh, important uh, step. This is just the beginning, as I have already told uh, in the said in the other groups because uh, our real work our practical work will start from now on so I invite all of you to uh, keep um, um, in touch uh, we will of course uh, send a, a follow-up email after this meeting soon tomorrow uh, to take it from there with the links to join the management platform that we will use as uh, Elena has uh, brilliantly explained today and introduced to us. Uh, Basecamp will be the main platforms that we will use for these joint activities uh, and to start working together. We will share with all of you the links to subscribe to this uh, platform and also we will plan some uh, small meetings with all the participants in order to have uh, a better management on the work that is in front of us. So we will coordinate all the activities with you of course so we will give you further instructions on this. In case you have any questions or doubts don't hesitate to contact us as well. I'm uh, always available for any doubts you may have. So for now, I think it's time uh, to close this meeting. Thank you again for your participation. We look forward to working with you. Now enjoy the video, uh, the closing video that we have made for all of you. Thank you very much.